Hey there. In November of 2016, three days before he was elected, I ran a video warning that Donald Trump could be the emperor my country has been building towards for decades. For a century, the United States has been drifting towards more and more centralized power in Washington, D.C. generally, and in the hands of the president in particular. This trend accelerated dramatically in the aftermath of 9-11. Any sane person observing Trump's campaign could see his authoritarian instincts, and it was easy for me to imagine that President Trump finally stamping out the last vestiges of the old republic and loosing some new monstrosity on the world in the shape of the country I love. Well, I am happy to report that none of that happened. By mid-2017, it was clear that there was no there there. Jeff Sessions and Steve Bannon were disappointed and on their way out. Their hopes of creating a new imperial white ethno-welfare state petered out when it became clear that Trump was going to govern by sucking up to the same Republican donors that he'd been failing to impress his entire life. Donald Trump, it turns out, is not a Vladimir Putin. What he is, however, is a Boris Yeltsin. The parallels are, to me, really inescapable. Like Yeltsin, Trump swept to power on a wave of rage at a discredited system. Sure, the elite that brought us the Iraq War and the 2008 financial crisis wasn't as bad as the Soviets, but the failures Clinton represented affected the whole planet, not just a few hundred million people. Like Trump, Yeltsin was a crushing disappointment to those who hoped he was going to bring anything other than a new kind of corruption. Earlier this year, I watched Citizen K, a gripping documentary about fallen Russian oligarch Mikhail Khodorovsky. The movie doesn't just tell the story of this deeply morally compromised political dissident, but it also tells the tragic tale of Russia's fall back into dictatorship in the 1990s and the early 2000s. I recommend Citizen K very highly, but I found it to be a deeply disturbing experience. The story of Russia's epic failure looked and felt terrifyingly familiar. The former Soviet Union was institutionally a much weaker place than the United States. It took barely a decade for its attempt at a republic to dissolve under a storm of Reaganite crony capitalism. Watching Trump, I can't help but wonder if the same process has happened to the much stronger institutions of my country. It just took four decades instead of only one. You don't need to go that left wing to appreciate the parallels. The movie does a great job of illustrating the mounting horror of the Putin regime as even sharks like Khodorovsky get swallowed. But it also demonstrates Putin's appeal. We like to imagine that it couldn't happen here, but after 20 years of escalating failure, you can see a sort of bone-deep weariness with American democracy setting in. And after four years of Trump, you see more and more open expressions of disgust with American politics. If democracy fails to deliver for long enough, people get sick of democracy. That's certainly what happened in Russia. Boris Yeltsin was a catastrophically weak leader who dissolved into sickness and alcohol fairly soon into his presidency. First, he was the plaything of the oligarchs and foreign powers who engineered his re-election in 1996. Then he became the plaything of Vladimir Putin, his appointed successor. Trump isn't a drunk, but his hapless, policy-free presidency is quite obviously the plaything of the rich, here and abroad. Speculation about who Trump's successor in the Republican Party could be has become a mainstay of U.S. journalism. The fear, I think quite rightly, is that his successor could have all of Trump's authoritarian instincts, but none of his incompetence. Weirdly, Stephen Miller, Trump's white nationalist immigration policy guy, kind of looks like a young Vladimir Putin. But it's hard to imagine Miller getting elected to anything. Hyper-interventionist and police fetishist Senator Tom Cotton is often bandied about as a competent successor to Trump, but not by anybody who's ever listened to him speak. The guy is just creepy. More pop culture savvy thugs like Representative Dan Crenshaw and Senator Josh Hawley seem to me like more credible options for the American Putin. But it's also possible that Trump has forever broken the old political path to power. 
I can imagine a future where the Republican Party is resuscitated by one of the country's most beloved actors, a guy who seems to have exclusively involved himself in fascism-friendly projects since rocketing to fame on the NBC sitcom The Office. Whether or not Trump's Boris Yeltsin-style incapacity leads directly to a Vladimir Putin-style figure, it's pretty clear that things aren't exactly going well here in the United States right now. I get the sense that there are some out there in the world who welcome this development. They shouldn't, because the analogy I've been using in this video so far is actually kind of faulty. Donald Trump absolutely is a Boris Yeltsin-style figure. But if he's replaced by an authoritarian hyper-nationalist fixated on dreams of military glory, that U.S. dictator will not be a Vladimir Putin. Because the United States isn't Russia. U.S. media avoids laying this out, but modern Russia is a pale shadow of the Soviet Union. In the early 1990s, Russia lost her traditional empire some of her largest cities, vast swaths of territory, and a significant chunk of her economy. Putin has done an impressive job with a bad hand, holding on to Russia's great power status through oil and gas and a nuclear arsenal they actually took subsidies from the United States to maintain safely for the first two post-Soviet decades. Dystopian fantasies aside, it's very unlikely that California or Texas would go their own way if U.S. democracy collapses. That collapse would absolutely make the United States weaker in the long run, but it could take some decades to get there. Maybe a lot of decades. The United States is a very rich and self-sufficient country, after all. And the dictator in charge during those decades would not be a Vladimir Putin. He or she would be much more likely to be a Napoleon or a Hitler. The path that Donald Trump is taking us down isn't good for us, and it isn't good for anybody else. Let's get off that path. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and click the bell next to the subscribe button to get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thanks.